Greetings everyone, it's Alexor again. We've actually got a crazy strong new patch for Lazy Pock. You're definitely gonna check this one out. It sort of just was slid in easily, just a small chill patch, it seems, but actually has huge changes. Good changes. We're not fully dead in my eyes, but definitely good changes. So let's just go over the patch. Now, first of all, not all of this, I'm not gonna read all of the whole patch, I'm just gonna get you the, the main gist of it. First is the Nemesis actually has been nerfed. Which I find to be funny. Like, especially the Poison Nemesis, that was the strongest one, but I think the Nemesis already isn't really a problem, or the Nemesis rather. They are really easy to deal with in most cases, except maybe through the campaign, but... Late in Monolith, it's really a joke. Um, it's so easy to get these items. Maybe this is intentional, I don't know. But even the Impaled ones are not really a big issue if you have a somewhat good build. So, I don't know why they nerfed them, but whatever. Anyway, it's good that they are now sort of on the same level because the Poison Nemesis was the strongest. While all Nemesis are equal, some Nemesis are more equal than others, you know how it is. So he was the, the more equal one. So that got nerfed. That's good. But the, the big thing is this one. This thing is an insane change, gentlemen. Corruption catch-up buffs. The result of these changes is that if you get one timeline up to 300 corruption, let's say you have one monolith, one timeline at 300 corruption, and then go to a fresh Empower timeline, meaning it's at 100 Corruption. Completing a single Echo will create a Shade Echo next to it that will boost that timeline straight to 296 Corruption. That is insane. That means once you actually, you can just, if you go to the monoliths with your new character, with your old character, for example, you get just one timeline to 300 Corruption, and all the other ones you do after that, you can just, with just one Echo, one, just one Echo, you can get them straight to 300 Corruption. Or 296 in this case. That is insane. I was not expecting this whatsoever. <laughs> not at all. I would have never guessed they would do this. It's kind of crazy to me actually that they went this route because as they said 300 corruption to sort of like 500 is the max they intend for the game to even be played. Anything higher is not really intended. They said before any build that can go to 1000 corruption is using bugs or is not working as intended. So getting people straight to the end game right away that fast is kind of crazy to me, but all right, whatever, it's fine. I like that because let's be honest, the, the grind through the echoes, even though they actually with the with the gaze of the Orobis, that has been changed. It's much faster now, but it was still annoying to just play through it just to get to the corruption, especially when you want to do the harbingers, right? But then again, the harbingers are shared across your account, so it's not really a big deal. But I guess this is sort of the addition to the fact that I think the Glyph of Envy it doesn't really do that much. It's a nice addition, but it's not good enough in my eyes to really warrant it. Um, especially when you have new characters <coughs> or solo of, um, or SSF. Anyway, it's a good change. That's it's a great change. So we're getting there. Bonus corruption based on the difference between the highest corruption timeline and the current timeline is now always 95. That's great. So if you have, again, if you have one corruption timeline at 300, all the other ones gain more corruption um, the more you play it, up to 95. It was kept at 60, apparently. I didn't even notice, but this is what it was. Now, this is also interesting. When the difference between the highest corruption timeline and the current timeline is greater than 40, meaning, for example, this has 200 corruption, uh, you have one timeline that has 200 corruption, and then you are currently playing one that has 100, or 160, it's greater than 40, or you have at least 8 gaze of Orbis, and the current Echo Web does not contain a Shade Echo already from this thing, then completing an Echo will create a Shade Echo next to it. So basically, you don't have to go to 300. Any... And this is actually kind of crazy. Any um, timeline that has, for example, 200 Corruption right now, and then you are playing another one that has 140, for example, then you gain this Shade of Echo, right? And then completing that Echo will create a Shade Echo right next to it, meaning it will go straight to 296. Because that's what it says here, it goes straight to 296. So that way you can also accelerate the Corruption even faster on already existing monoliths. I'm blown away by this. I don't know why they're go going this direction. Maybe they are cooking something in the background. I don't know. Because they went from... It takes you... 50 hours, that's, that's too much. It takes you 20 hours to get through the Empower timelines to even get to Freedom of Corruption. Or even more than that, time-wise. To, it takes you one hour. 
<laughs> if so. Uh, it's kind of crazy. There's like This is like a huge jump, a really huge jump in corruption catch-up, which is kind of crazy to me. But okay, sure, I'll take it. That is great, though. Uh, corruption is now... Now everyone can play a Fury Corruption, no problem. Now they might just die very fast to it. Um, I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, um, I like it. Death screen, this is also cool. Added the following info to the death screen. How much damage was dealt by the killing blow? How much overkill damage the killing blow had? Basically, how much more it actually did. This is great if you, <clears throat> for example, if you play against bosses and you die to it, then you can see, okay, this was 100 damage too much. Shader said, just need to work a little bit on health or water, whatever. Or it was 10,000 too much, so it's just a one-shot attack you cannot tank whatsoever. So that's great to know, actually. Oh, well, it was a crit. That's pretty cool. This whole enemy balance thing is probably coming, like, all the enemies got nerfed. Well, not all of them, but all the strong ones got nerfed. And the key thing for me really was, where is he? Where is that old bitch? This one. Thunder Stalker. Rex likes this, I'm sure. Because he died in hardcore to Thunder Stalker. In his first attempt on launch day. And he's super nerfed now. And I understand it because the balance was a bit off in how much damage these mobs do. This, I think, are sort of bringing it all a little bit lower together. So you can tell here, what is happening here is that Last Epoch is becoming much easier. Now, and I've been getting into Path of Exile recently, right? Because the new season is launching, or has launched by the time this video goes out. Um, the, I, I, always, I always look at it like this. Diablo 4 is the entry level into ARPGs. It's very easy to get into this whole stuff. It's very beginner friendly, very casual friendly, right? That's D4. That's the spot. And people who want to grind the D4 forever are sort of missing the mark entirely because that's not what the game is designed for. It is for casuals, in my eyes, mostly. Then you have at the other end of the scale, you have Path Exile, which is virtually impossible to get in unless you have a guide, like someone actually helping you directly. Oh, you spend 3,000 hours learning the game. That's the exact opposite. You cannot get in the game at all whatsoever because it explains nothing. None of the mechanics in the games in the game are explained. You have to just figure it out yourself. And as Epoch was sort of in the perfect middle always between that. It was a little bit more difficult than D4 in not just how FX is played, but also um, how the skill trees, you have 130 skill trees for all the skills, right? So that's uh, kind of a lot. But it wasn't as difficult as Path of Exile, so it was a perfect middle ground. Also money-wise, right? Diablo is 70 bucks, as Epoch is 35 bucks, and Path of Exile is free. So it was perfectly, exactly in the middle. Now though, it seems a bit like they are, especially since 1.0 and the changes that came, with 1.1 rather, um, like the changes that came ever since, they seem to be moving more to, towards the Diablo 4 idea. And I don't know if I like this. Maybe they want to have more of the D4 money. Or just want to make the game more accessible to people. I mean, Path of Exile is also doing this, by the way. The upcoming leak now, the Calgary, Settlers of Calgary leak, is already introducing some mechanics that make it easier for people to get into the game. So maybe this is generally the trend in RPGs now. I don't know. It seems like it a little bit. Um, also, from what we've seen in the leaks, Diablo apparently is also on the Blizzard route. It's also changing the Paragon system. Make it easier. I don't know. It seems like this is sort of the direction all the RPGs are going with. Um, I mean, at least probably still in the middle of it. The rest is, by the way, just bug fixes. We don't really care about this. Um, but I don't know. You tell me what you think of this. This whole this whole patch was really just making the game easier. It's much easier to get to high corruption. Much, much easier. Nemesis are easier. General order, the mobs are less threatening. I guess it also makes it easier to, to play hardcore, I guess. I don't know. Tell me what you think of it. Perfect is doing the same. So do you like that they are trying to make it more accessible to the general public? Or do you sort of like these games as being your thing because you spend 3,000 hours and nobody can even match you? <laughs> and so tell me what you think of that. I like this patch a lot, generally. Good changes, especially corruption. That is all good. Um, I just wonder what the direction is with this. I mean, Aberroth is still a very tough boss. It's the toughest boss in the game. Many have not even killed it yet, except for the absolute elite of players. So, I don't know. Just just tell me what you think of it in the comments below. I like the patch in general. It's great. Um, 
but no, sadly, sorry, uh, EG right now. Yeah, Path XL is, is the thing, so I'm gonna play this next week. But uh, yeah, I like the patch. So tell me what you think of it. Very long-winded outro, isn't it? Tell me what you think of it. Let me say that again. <laughs>